I had a really good performance this weekend and I know I have a lot of my students who also sometimes have good performances but also sometimes they don't have such a good mental game going on when they go into their matches. And to those students, I've always recommended a specific book which has really upped my level of the mental game when you're competing in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Some of these mental tactics to get my mental game on point, I also use if I'm gonna go out to make a sale or just for business purposes in general. Before the match started, I gave you a brief introduction about who the author of the book is. Today is the competition day. I have one match and I'm feeling good. I'm feeling strong feeling confident that I'm gonna go out there and perform to my best. You know, since I have about an hour before the matches start, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about how my mental thinking, what's going on before the matches start, how I really prep myself up to have the best performance ever. I wanna recommend this book, a book that I really like. I read when I was a purple belt. I used to lose a lot of matches back in the day. I used to lose more matches than I used to win. And then after I read this book, my mindset really started to shift. My mental game was really on point and I started to win way more, way more tournaments than I would lose. So that was a nice turning point for me. I don't know how much of it I should attribute to the book, but in my personal opinion, I think a large part of it, due to the, some of the fundamentals that are taught in this book. And the book is called The Art of Mental Training. And the cool thing about this book is the guy is a PhD psychology professor at a, at a big university. I forget which university he's teaching out of. Not only is he a PhD psychology professor, he also, wrestles or used to wrestle but now coaches a wrestling team this book is like geared for people who wrestle in mind and this guy's been there he's walked through the steps he was a wrestling competitor himself and now he coaches future champs at a usa college uh, pretty 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 good wrestling college from what i remember he's entirely focused on how to frame your mindset to perform the best in competition uh, some of the tips that come out of this book well I'll uh, voice over for you guys later. So it's been about three months since I competed. I mean, it's just the situation here with the pandemic. I'm really thankful that I'm even able to compete. So I'm happy that I'm able to do what I love, do what I do. And uh, with that love in mind, I'm gonna really set my mind on fire. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be moving fast, I'm gonna be moving hard. I wanna be moving in a way where I'm not gonna give the other guy a chance to even get started. So. Uh, wish me luck. Before I get into the mental techniques that'll help you in your performance, I want to talk, tell a little story about the author, DC Gonzalez. As a psychology professor, he had a great interest in the great soccer player, Pele. I think everyone knows who Pele is. He's been called the greatest footballer of all time by FIFA themselves. Pele averaged almost a goal every single game throughout his career, and he led his national team of Brazil to the World Cup three times. So this led Gonzalez to wonder, what is it about Pele that makes him so special? Yes, he has the skills to be one of the best football players of all time, but also during his career, there were also really other good football players playing on other teams as well. So what was it that Pele did that made him a cut above the rest? You see, Gonzalez didn't know immediately, but he did always keep his eyes and ears open for an opportunity to see what, what Pele had to say about his mental tactics. And lucky for him, there was an interview between Pele and a sports mental psychologist called Gary Mack. And during that interview, DC Gonzalez got a few of the ideas that he used to form this book, although he has his own interpretation about uh, how to use these techniques. During their interview, DC Gonzalez learned what were the two things that Pele really had that other fighters didn't have. And those two things came out to be enthusiasm and a mental edge. First of all, whenever Pele was about to go play football, he was always smiling and he was always upbeat. He was happy to be where he was and he loved what he was doing. Even if he was really tired or really sleepy and he had just woken up or if he's hung over, whatever, he was always happy to be, go out there and play ball. And then the second part is what we're gonna be talking about in this video is the mental edge. What was interesting about this interview that he did with Gary Mack was that he talked about his routine before he played every single game. Before Pele started playing, he would go into a quiet place in the locker room and he would pretty much meditate for 20 minutes in a quiet place. And while he's meditating, he talked about how he played a film. Behind his eyes and his mind, in his mind's eye, he was playing a film, which for Pele started on the sandy beaches of Brazil when he was just a young child. When he was just a young child, he would play not only the film, but also the emotions of how he felt. The sheer joy of playing soccer on the beach in Brazil when he was young and his love for the sport. His film would then move on to play parts of the game that were upcoming, the challenge that was on hand. He would not only see himself playing as an untouchable player, but he would feel the emotions of what the ball felt like dribbling in his feet when he was moving like an untouchable player. In the interview, Pele said he imagined everything, not just the game and not just the players that were in the field. Pele imagined the crowd, the atmosphere, the people cheering in the stands. He imagined his own team and his opponents with such reality that he could pretty much 
breathe the air that he was going to be breathing out on the field and he could hear the voices that he was going to hear when he was playing the game. Most importantly, what Pele told Gary Mack about his routine was that Pele, and this is from, and this is a quote from Pele, is that he said, it's not just about the vision and the imagery. It's not just about the vision and the imagery, it's also about the emotions and the feelings that are associated with success. Uh, Pele pointed out that it was really important to feel exactly how good it felt to do what he was about to do. So from this interview, DC Gonzalez, of course he did his other, of course he did research in other areas and other athletes to come down with three things, three techniques that can help you, your peak mental performance. Those three things are actually really simple. The first one is breathing. Second one is relaxation, or I like to call it just meditation or a state of focus. The third one in DC Gonzalez's book is imagery, which I like to just call highlight reels. And DC Gonzalez is a really good, has a really good way of explaining himself these three techniques, but I'm just gonna use my own language because it's easier for me to talk in my own voice than it would be in DC Gonzalez's voice. So in general, when you're going out to a match, and this is something that a lot of beginners have when they're gonna do a jiu-jitsu match, is they get super excited. Their heartbeat just goes over out the roof, just blows the roof open, their heartbeat is beating way too fast. They're too easily excitable. Not a good, not a good mental state to be in when you're gonna be doing a jiu-jitsu match. So breathing is one of those techniques that's gonna help you bring it down. If we say like a level of excitement from one to 10, I generally find that I perform the best when I'm at about a seven or eight. And that means that I'm at like a nine or a 10. I'll have to use some breathing techniques to try to bring down my level of excitement so I could have a good level of energy, but also be focused and not too overly excited. If you find yourself feeling either nervous or you're feeling overly excited, I like to use a method called box breathing. And what box breathing means is you're gonna draw a box with your pattern of breathing. Uh, starting in with your first breath. When you breathe in your first breath, you take four or five seconds breathing in. Once you've breathed completely in, once you're completely full of oxygen and your, air, your lungs are full, you hold your breath. You hold your breath for another four to five seconds to complete the top side of the box. After you've held it for the appropriate amount of seconds, you're gonna breathe out for the four or five seconds that you breathed in. You wanna breathe out all of the oxygen out of your lungs so that you have a completely empty lung from which you'll hold for another four to five seconds to complete the box breathing sequence. And you can just continue to breathe like this for however long it takes for you to bring yourself down to an appropriate level of energy. Like I said, it's a little bit different for every person, but as you go out there and compete more and more often, you're gonna kind of find what works for you. For me, I find that it's good for to be at like a level of seven or eight. Most of the time, if I start to feel nervous, I'll use the breathing to kind of soothe myself. I find myself at a level of peak confidence with pretty much no nervousness or fear inside my heart whatsoever when I'm going out to fight. So the first technique is breathing. The second technique is putting yourself in a meditative state. You could call it meditation, but I don't really call it meditation because I'm not really super relaxed by any means. I usually just kind of zone out and look at one part on the mat and I'll just put myself in a level of intense focus where I can't hear anything that's going on around me. I stop looking at things that are around me. I pretty much want to just shut down where I'm inside my brain and the only thing that's talking to me or that I'm hearing or that I'm seeing is what's playing inside my head. So I like to call it an intense level of focus because I'm definitely not feeling super relaxed, but I guess you could also call it relaxation because at the same time inside your brain, you're trying to clear out all thoughts whatsoever so that you can be in a state of void where you start playing your highlight reels, your body will be able to absorb the information that you wanted to absorb. So in general, like if you get distracted by other people or you get distracted by the music or the sounds of people's voices outside, it's really hard for you to tell your body. It's really hard for your mind to absorb the information that you're gonna be feeding it through the next technique, which I'm gonna cover here in a second. So you gotta really put yourself in a position where you're able to absorb this information and feel the emotions that you need to feel. And in order to do that, you gotta find yourself at a level of complete focus where nothing outside, where no noises or anything that you see is gonna be bothering you. You just have a blank slate inside of your head and then now we can move on to the third technique. If you don't clear your mind before you play your highlight reels, it's not gonna really stick very well in your brain. Uh, if you're finding yourself really easily distracted, what, the things that you need to tell yourself, the things that you need to feel are not really gonna be there when you actually start your match. So you really gotta put yourself in a, in a state of mind that's, that's, gonna, that's gonna help you absorb the information, it's gonna help you absorb the things that you need to absorb to achieve that mindset that's gonna make you fight at your best. So the third and most important technique is what I like to call them success tapes. I like to call them highlight reels. And what we're doing once we're in our state of ultimate focus is 
we play a set of images or voices or movies. Inside of our brain, we're gonna play just to put ourselves into a champion's state of mind. So for me personally, I have a little mantra that I like to say. I don't know if you don't know what a mantra is, if you need some inspiration, some of the things that you could say to yourself, some of the things that you could ask yourself is what, what are the things that a champion is thinking inside of his head before he fights? Typically for self-talk, you gotta kind of amp yourself up, build yourself up. You can say stuff like, I'm strong, I'm fast, I'm going to dominate. You could say, I'm in control of the match, I never give in. You could say stuff like, I'm powerful, I'm a force to be reckoned with, the force of dominance, I'm a champion, any of these type of short little sentences that you can kind of repeat in your head just to kind of work your way back up from a low level of excitement to a high level of excitement if you need to work yourself up to a seven, which is something I have to do often when I'm competing. I think I've done it so much that although I do have a little bit of nervousness that I have to work out, for the most part, I have to, I have to kind of work on bringing myself up to a level of excitement that's appropriate to have a good match. To me, that's like a, between a seven or an eight. So you can use these little mantras and self-talk inside of your head to kind of work yourself up to the right. Aside from that, I usually have two parts of highlight reels that I like to play. One is well before the matches. So maybe like 30 or 40 minutes before my match. I'll do a little short meditation where I kind of clear my mind. And this is kind of like a primer for me and it seems to work really well for me. I clear my mind and I think about all the reasons why I like Jiu Jitsu. So I think about my time in San Diego when I was training at the Herbero Brothers and I think about what the mat felt like when I was running, doing the warm ups. I think about my happiest moments when I was training Jiu Jitsu and what it felt like to be rolling. Uh, not just like the emotions, but also kind of like what it would feel, what the gi would feel like in my hand, how the mats would feel like on my feet, what the air would smell like, what the music, what kind of music would be playing at the Hibero Brothers gym in San Diego. I really paint a full picture, not just like, not just like a flat image, but a full immersive picture. And I really try to breathe in all the small actual feelings that I would have if I actually were in San Diego. I've been doing this enough that usually to kind of paint the primer, I, I, I usually have a couple scenes that I always play in my head that seems to really work for me. Aside from that, I always want to put myself, I try to put myself in a, in a state of positive energy. And what I mean by that is if I feel any negative emotions whatsoever that are going through my head, I'll usually turn the highlight reel tapes off because these are uh, kind of intrusive thoughts that'll, that will kind of stop you from absorbing the positive energy that's kind of playing through your head. I'll do another blank slate where I'll just kind of think about nothing for 20 seconds and then I'll start playing my highlight reel tapes again. And I'll try to do this until I can go from beginning to end without having any thoughts of nervousness, without any thoughts of fear in my heart. So to really be able to make sure that I'll be performing at my peak even when times get tough during the match. So during the primer part of the highlight reel, I'm not really trying to amp myself up too much. I'll usually just think a lot about why I love the sport and think about all the good and think about all the good times I had while I was while I've been training. My love for jujitsu, and then I'll amp myself up a little bit, amp myself up to about a seven or eight, then I'll clear my mind again. And then this is the most important highlight reel. I'll, I'll tell myself the mantras, and I'll be thinking about myself inside the stadium, wherever it is I'm competing. I visualize the stadium. I visualize myself moving in a way where people can't stop me, moving in a way where I'm pretty much an unstoppable dominant force. I really don't think much about how the opponent's gonna move. I really only focus on my movements. So if, I, if my focus for whatever reason starts to be, start going to my opponent and how he's gonna move or how he's gonna do what I, I actually, actually, I just, I don't care. I just shut it off. I keep thinking about how I'm gonna move. I'm gonna keep thinking about the emotions, what the mat's gonna feel like on my feet when I'm moving in a really dominant way. Think about the emotions and the feelings that I'm gonna have when I'm moving in this dominant way during the match. And I also think about the feeling of victory after the match is done. So I, I visualize the medal being placed on my neck and I think about what it would feel like to have that medal. I really sell it to myself during these highlight reels and I really, really focus on what it feels like, the full experience before the match, during the match, having a dominant performance, what it feels like to be a dominant fighter. And then also after the match, the good feelings that you get after you win. So, what you're, control what you're controlling inside your mind is really important. I used to train at Dean Lister's gym and I remember hearing Dean Lister say this. He said that in an MMA fight, like your will is like a fire on a lighter. And if that fire wavers or flickers, if it ever goes out, the fight is done. If the will to fight for even just a moment flickers on and off and you feel even the moment, you feel even a second of thinking, oh, maybe I should quit you're done. Your opponent's going to just trample you because he's going to be in a really strong state of mind. He's not going to stop. And he's also, this is something that maybe a lot of people don't realize, but your opponent will also feel your energy levels flicker. 
And if you are really mentally strong and you're just dominating someone during a match, sometimes you can feel your opponent like he's got, he's like a balloon, he's like a whoopee cushion with a hole in it. You can just feel his energy just deflate like air coming out of a balloon. So three quotes that I found that are actually really good that I think are really suitable for the idea of the mental game in a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu match. First one says, and this is actually, I think is good for business as well. The first one says, Imagineering is vital because it leads to greater self-belief and greater confidence. This in turn leads to better performance and better achievements. This is another one about controlling your internal critic inside your mind, which I think is also important to achieve the peak state of mind. It says, especially when things are at their worst, your self-talk must be positive, encouraging, and empowering. Shut down the internal critic. And lastly, this is another good quote. I think it's very similar on topic with what I'm talking about. This quote says, you have to learn to control yourself before standing a chance of controlling your game. Getting your intensity revved up too powerfully prior to the competition will actually hurt your performance. So I like that quote, it's, it, it kind of goes to show that it's not all about just amping yourself up. There is easily a way to be way too amped up to have optimal performance. For this weekend, I had a really good match. I could tell that my performance was on point. For me, a strong performance isn't really about winning or even about how many points I scored or whether I was able to submit my opponent. For me, a strong performance is going to be all to do about the mental game, how well I managed myself to be a dominant fighter. And sometimes my mental game is on point and I might lose a match, but I know I'm not gonna feel any regret with the way I fought because my mental game was on point and I was a strong fighter. It's always possible that there's a stronger fighter out there than me. The worst, the worst matches that I ever have are the ones where, whether I win or lose, it's the ones where I know that I left something on the table. I didn't give it my all. I didn't give it my best. And even when I win with those matches, I know that I, didn't, I wasn't able to manage my mental peak performance well enough to give my best performance. So as long as, I, for me, as long as I have a super strong mental performance, I know I'm not gonna have any regrets. Where, as if I fail to control the things that I can fail during my match, I always feel like uh, there's something I can do a little bit better next time I, I, I come back onto the mats to compete again. All right, guys, so in closing, these are three techniques that you can use to improve your mental game in competition. And uh, none of this would have been possible without an awesome team. My team, Jiu Jitsu Land, I like to call it the best team in the world because I truly believe that it's the best team in the world. And uh, thanks for watching. If you guys like this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'll see you guys again soon.